You follow, I hope, what I mean by Nausari and Bombay Group. I came that day from Calcutta. I mean, those days I used to come from Calcutta. As such, I told those family who were with whom Baba was staying that I'm not from Bombay, I'm not from uh, Nausari. Today I have come from, as such, I have, I'm from Calcutta, so please ask. So they, go, uh, they went inside and asked Baba. They said, Eraj Karadia has come and he wants to see you. So then uh, Baba said, tell him to come inside. As such, I came, went inside. That's how I got the opportunity being a Calcutta man to come, though I was born in Nausari. Like that, I got a number of opportunities. And then he took me there inside. He made me sit. He told me only five minutes. I said, as you please. And then he told me to sit and sit till for about fifteen minutes. In that fifteen minutes, uh, I was just watching him. And he was doing some work with the other manly people and all that. After that 15 minutes, I was told to go, so I again bowed down to him, embraced him, and I went away. Next thing which I did was that like that every alternate year, for one reason or the other, either I am known as a Nausari Wala and I went to um, Nagar, or as a Bombay Wala and went to Nagar, or from Calcutta Wala I became, and I went one way or the other to. Now it reminds me of 1962, when there was an East-West gathering where a lot of uh, Americans, Australians and uh, Europeans came along with thousands of Indians. Now, those days also I was in Calcutta. As such, I phoned up, I mean, uh, I came from Calcutta early because I came to know that there is an East-West gathering. And normally my desire is to be a volunteer so that I can get maximum chance to be with Baba. That is the main idea behind it. And at the same time help the devotees or the lovers or the newcomers and guide them for the proper thing, whatever I was doing. So, I went to uh, Pune about three days early and I found some of the Australians who were supposed, uh, who were supposed to be coming a little late. They came early because the steamship arrived a little early. And uh, I had only the first circular but not the second one which says that not to mix with no Easterner will mix with Westerner unless I tell them. That is, unless Baba says so. But I was not, I never received that circular. As such, I went out with two Australian ladies by name Gladys and Gladys. They were walking around the place from Pune Hotel to Bun Garden. In between, there comes a Guru Prasad where Baba gave East West gathering. Now, in that East West gathering, uh, since I went by that way, there was one uh, gatekeeper kept at the Guru Prasad where Baba was staying. Uh, his name was Bedul Kaka. Now Bedul Kaka knew me very well. So he told inside, he went inside and told Baba that Iraj is going with uh, those two Australian ladies. As such, Baba told, when Iraj comes back from Burn Garden, you tell those ladies to go back and call, uh, uh, call me inside. Thereby I got a chance to see Baba again. Uh, about three days early and in that three days or two days early, I don't exactly remember. Those, he called me inside, I went inside and Baba asked me first question, have you read the circulars? I said, yes. Then don't you know that you are not supposed uh, to mix with them? I said, I'm sorry Baba, I haven't received that circular. As such, he told me, Okay, you be with Dr. Barucha like this, he did, and he said, you always be with Dr. Barucha and come morning and evening and look after a group of Westerners. That's how I got a chance, double chance, otherwise as an Easterner, I would have gone only in the evening. While as a Westerner come Easterner, I was uh, allowed to see morning and evening Baba. So I helped, in the, I mean, in helped you and indirectly I got myself helped. So that's how I got a chance for about seven days. Then I got a chance, because of you all, I got a chance to go in Merazad also. Now in going to this Merazad and all that, I was so happy that I was always with the Baba. Because Baba will call us little early before Westerner comes. Then again Westerners go away, then again we are called for some instructions or something to be said. And like that, I was invariably called for one or the other reason. So I was more and more in contact with him. Then of course, um, uh, then, of course, helping Westerner was nothing. They were so nice people that I just have to take them in the bus 
from one place to another on the contrary, I got a right in bus. Otherwise, I would have to do walkie walkie. <laughs> so, double advantage, I got it. In fact, triple advantage. Seeing Baba is number one, meeting with him twice, thrice in a day. Then again in the evening, I used to bring Westerners to this uh, Guru Prasad. So I used to come little early because Westerners were called little early. The Easterners were coming little behind them. So like that I got more and more time to be with Baba. Of course, what he explained and all that you know so many times. That you were all there, Westerners and Easterners. So they know it. So I need not repeat all those things. Now like that there were so many uh, other times in April when Baba used to be in uh, Pune. I went before 62 also. In which case, one way or the other, he has called me morning and evening and that is where I got number of chances. I had so many chances that uh, I forgot to tell you in those seven days when I stayed with Baba. Uh, throughout my seven days, I mean first, uh, minusing the first day, rest of the five days or six days I should say, he gave me whatever he used to drink, little bit of juice, he will have one or two sips and he used to give me. And he played with me seven times, I think which you all know that game. I think last year when I was in Myrtle Beach, I showed some of you. And uh, of course, card of games also. Then there is one interesting game. One day Baba was, I mean we were in a close group only of about 20 people or so. And uh, Baba was so happy with us that he said today I would like that the people. I mean he was explaining some things which was very high for our understanding and probably he found that we are tired and all that. So what he did was, he said let us, he knew us all better, so he told let us enjoy something or we, let us talk some joke or some uh, some f funny story. So some or one or two people said some funny story and things like that. Then my turn came, so he told me, uh, you can do anything. I said, I can do one black magic. <laughs> <laughs> But mind you, it is not a black magic, it is a <coughs> word is only black magic. But the name of it is just a trick. So in that, I picked up one boy and of course to impress upon the, those another 25 people, of course I, uh, there also I got uh, three good chances. I first before starting my trick, I bowed down to Baba and I embraced him and I made that boy who was with me, he also embraced Baba. Like that. I got three chances in the one trick only. Because in the first, when I did that trick, it was just a question of, uh, you see, impressing the people. It was a trick associated with the name. But if somebody would have given that, I mean, given a little bit of idea, because people were all busy with the Baba. There was so much engrossed in Baba that they were not interested in my trick, probably. But in that, go I got double advantage. Because Baba started... Uh, uh, taking interest in my trick and I did it, I repeated the trick at least 15-20 times and none of those 30-40 boy, people who were sitting there could catch me. It was so easy. They tried their level best. Some of them were, I mean, giving maximum, uh, uh, what I should say, attention to my trick but they still couldn't. They said, change the boy. So I said, before I change, I must bow down to Baba because otherwise my power will go away. So we, we both again bow down. And the new boy started, so I said, again, I must bow down. So like that, I got a thrice chance to meet Baba. And then the trick ended, but nobody could catch me. So Baba said, okay, now you explain to them. It was a very simple trick. Anything that follows after the black, black thing I indicate is the thing which people would like to know. If it was like this. Suppose if you say that I want this one and that boy will be sent out and I keep on touching other things and then I touch any black thing in the room and then touch this and he will immediately say, this is the one. So trick was that simple. But that is why I named the black magic. Now it could be turned into white magic if I make a white and the next thing. But white things are very difficult to find in the room. A black practically you will find in any room, even in this room you see just now, there are a number of black things. So this was a trick I learned in college. I just played so that People all started laughing and joking. That's how people want, ba Baba wanted it. And this was the first, first opportunity that I could make Baba happy. Which till today I was feeling that I never did it. Then the second opportunity was that uh, somebody told me that Baba likes those berries, the black one. So 
in Pune in those days, one of these uh, April May gathering, of course not East West, I think it was not East West gathering, but some other gathering, when Easterners were only called. So at that time, I had an opportunity to uh, bring that and I gave it to Baba early in the morning because some people bring something, some people, because Baba told me, don't give me flowers. I, I don't waste money after flowers. Because he gave one ex example that when he, when, once he came to, uh, I mean, foreign country and that is Western. I don't know whether it was in Europe or in America. But he said himself that uh, 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 people in uh, that foreign country gave me a big garland. But they really gave me with love. But they never knew what was inside the garland. There was a bee. And that bee was biting me here. He being a silent and with the love with which it was given, he said, I just kept it on. And he kept it on and on till that bee stopped biting it. And it so happened that he became completely red on this side. So, the people said, I mean the people sitting around said, Ah, Baba is looking red, reddish. But then Baba explained to us that they don't know what I was suffering. But because they were happy, I maintained myself. So indirectly you can see he was trying to say that how much he is suffering daily for us. And in this way also, to make us happy, he suffers in every branch of life. We have no idea what Avatar does for us. We think that he is a just human being. Of course, I was thinking previously in the same way. Today I think after reading him, after being with him. And you can imagine because of your love or because of the love of those Westerners who gave that garland. Of course, they would not put be inside, but it was there. So he knew that they were having so much love. As such, he never removed that garland also. He could have removed and given it to somebody else, but he never gave it. Because he knew that the same bee would have probably done the same thing to somebody else. So he maintained it. So like that, in our happiness, he doesn't mind suffering intensely. Infinitely he suffers and still he suffered this way also. So that day onwards I decided not to give him even a smallest possible flower with whatever love. Because I used to give him always rose. I stopped that after knowing that bee and that time onwards. So now this time I was told, somebody told me that he likes berries. So I gave him. So I had one opportunity because he gave me so much to eat. Those seven days he used to serve himself from person to person. It not only to me, every. So I was also one of the, uh, I mean, I don't know what I should say, how much fortunate I am, all that. But I can say that I got through him which I could have never received because my first desire was to be with God, see God and get things from God. And I naturally I got it from him. Now, the second thing that I gave those uh, uh, berries to him, he ate some of them and the rest of it, he gave it to me. So I took it as prasad and I ate it full. The one more important point when this prasad came to me, came to me that uh, one day he explained that when I give you prasad, don't give it, give it to your even or to your son unless I tell you. Because I came to know that he says okay, when I give it to you, it is only for you. If I have to give it for somebody else, I will say give it to everybody or give it to so and so. Then only you give it to me. Because when I give it, I give it for you because I know what my connections with you are, what I am going to do with you. This prasad has an in, infinite meaning inside. They don't just give it because they have they come down to our level and give us food. So like that, that was one of the reasons where he said, okay, don't give it to anybody. And I know it because uh, Prasad was given to one of our people who were sitting there in those uh, 50 for 55 uh, gathering. And uh, in that, he had kept it for his wife who, who couldn't participate because it was only meant for men. And they were very loving husband and wife. He said, no, this is for you because he knew it that it is with him. So he said, what is in your hand? He said, nothing. Then he was told that prasad which I gave it to you is for only you, you eat it up. That is where he ate it up. Like that, there are so many instances, of course, I am forgetting things by, uh, by and by. But I think if I have to wait longer and longer, I might remember more and more things. Like that, now I can tell you about the last one. And that is my gathering in 1965. Now in 1965, Oh, I forgot in between one, I think I better tell you before that. In one of these 1958 or 59, I had a, 
opportunity to see Baba. Now, I don't remember exactly month and all that, must be about April, May. In that, uh, actually what happened was that he, uh, I went to see him. But while coming to Bombay, from Bombay station to Pune, I lost my bag. So, the instruction which he gave me, after, of course I reached there in the morning, I met him. So, Baba said, are you happy and all that. Of course, from my face I was a little bit upset because everything of mine was stolen except my small bag. And uh, money, clothes and things like that. But I never bothered much because in the other bag I had got a lot of, I had quite sufficient money so that I can maintain myself for seven days which was my stay in, uh, uh, in Pune. As such, I thought that I never told him. So he asked one of that monthly person by name Merji whom you know, you want to give, I mean you want some money, he asked me. So I said no, but then he said if you want I'll tell Merji to give money to you. I said, no, but I don't need it. After that, he remarked, which was worth remembering for me. He said, don't get married, otherwise you will lose your children. Well, he said in a very jovial mood, but I took it as my instructions. And I thought not to get married. Now it so happened that t then, till 65, I never thought about getting married also. It so happened that in 1965, the month of uh, January, first week of January, we were called for about half an hour. In that half an hour, we were only called from Nausari group. So again, I took the chance as a Nausari group, as I told you. And I said, Ke, well, uh, let me take a chance because I never knew when I will come again. So he told me. So we went there, Nagar, we reached about one o'clock and we were only there for 40 minutes or 35 minutes or something like that. In that, for the first time, I, I saw Baba asking everybody individually personal question. How are you? What are you doing? That is normal question he used to ask everybody. But then he asked about business or about work or family life or something to other. Everybody he asked. When my turn asked, he asked me, what are you doing here? You are not in Calcutta. I said, Baba, I have come here for interview in Indian Airlines. So Baba said, why do you want? You want to come to Bombay? I said, Baba, I have got, uh, I am earning there more salary and I am going to get less salary here. He said, don't come. Then uh, I said, but sir, Baba, there is one problem is that in my future, I will have bright prospects in Indian Airlines, while I won't have any prospects there. As such, I came for interview, but if you say no, I will not come. So, Baba, just for a fraction of a second, he says, okay, you can come. The second question he asked me, you want to? I said, uh, Baba, I don't mind if you say so. But uh, you remember when I lost my bag and all that and in Pune you told me don't get married otherwise you will lose your children. As such, I have, not, I have decided not to get married. So then he says, no, no, you can. I said, well, if you say so, I have no objection. And that's it. Then he said, remember me constantly. Then, before leaving that, of course, the rest of the people were also told. I was told that you may not see me next time. So I thought, okay, since he is going into a greater seclusion for two, three years, so he is telling. I never knew that he is going to drop body in 69 and I will never be able to see him. And I never saw him. Never saw him because of two reasons. One, because I came to Bombay. If I would be in Calcutta or Nausari or anywhere else, I had a good opportunity, I could have come down again because Bombay people were not allowed to come.